ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Hello David's Monday. So that means that it's time to take a look at all the news from the games that I like to cover. First, I want to start with a correction from last week. Uh, in last week's Hello Dave, I talked about the uh, new corrosive sinks that have been added into Elite Dangerous, and I mentioned that the unlock process for it was a unlock buy for materials. Um, seems that was not correct, that apparently it was a, uh, it is unlock, as a true unlock, you unlock once and then you can buy as many as you want. You guys were very nice to uh, to correct me in the comment section, so thanks a lot to all you guys who uh, who did that. And uh, I just wanted to correct that mistake to, uh, yeah, <laughs> make sure we don't have inaccurate news in, in Hello Dave, try my best not to. So yeah, my bad, sorry about that. Over on Kerbal Space Program, we are getting the first patch this week. Currently, the aim is to launch this on the 16th. That should be Thursday. While the patch is going to be a smaller one, we're not seeing the next step on this roadmap that they released together with the, with the early access of the game. This patch is mainly just going to be bug fixes and performance issues. Um, something that the game does need. Um, there's been a lot of talk about whether... Kerbal Space Program, whether people should get it. I would say if, if you have Kerbal Space Program 1 right now, I would probably stick to that for now. I think there's a lot of potential in Kerbal Space Program, especially if they stick to that roadmap that they have um, that they have announced. But right now, the game is very bare bone. Bare, bare bone? Why? <laughs> very bare bone. And it's lacking a lot of the features that we have in KSP1. Still a bit of a way to go, I think, before the real value is being added into KSP2. That being said, I have had a lot of fun with the game, um, but you could argue whether I could have had the same amount of fun in, in KSP1 at this point in time. But anyway, first patch is coming out with box and performance uh, fixings, fixes uh, this week, and uh, hopefully that's going to help a lot, because I did try build some larger rockets, not even larger, like 150-ish parts, and, and the game was just a slideshow. <laughs> so it definitely needs some uh, performance tuning there. But hopefully this patch will at least take us some of the way there. In Star Citizen, of course, we have the big, big patch. 3.18 has been launched to the live servers and it's now available for everybody to play. And with that, of course, also come the um, the account wipe where everything has been wiped back to the start. Ship purchase, everything, of course, not stuff you bought for real money, but everything you bought in-game, found in-game, will have been wiped. With that patch also came a number of issues. Most of Sunday, the game has been completely unavailable. And um, with logging issues, and if you manage to log into the game, get into the main menu, you would have a really hard time getting into a uh, into a, a live server. And the service that has been in has been, uh, uh, let's say, varying quality. Um, I tried to play here just a few hours ago before recording this, and I ended up just saying, yeah, this is not tonight that I'm going to be playing Star Citizen, because the servers were just not behaving Trains not spawning in, in Area 18, not being able to sell materials at the trade stations, and ships not spawning for some people, and for a long time I couldn't really even log into the game. So there is um, a very classic, uh, very buggy version of Star Citizen available right now. I don't get while they're launching these patches at the end of a week. I know they've been tested and tested and tested on the PTU, but anybody out there who's done anything professionally with uh, <laughs> with software development will know you do not launch patches on a Friday. So, but anyway, patches out and it's been a bit of a mess here over the weekend. Hopefully there's going to be a, um, there's going to be some hot, uh, hot fixes. I think a lot of the thing is server side, so they might not even have to deploy a patch. They can fix a lot of other things server side. Um, but hopefully that's something they're going to be fixing here um, today when this Hello Dave goes live and there's a good chance when this video goes out that a lot of the uh, issues has already been addressed. There is also another patch already announced, 3.18.1, and the reason why I'm mentioning this now is because there has also been announced that there will, with this patch, going to be a partial wipe again. So we had the wipe with 3.18.0, we got to get 3.18.1 here um, in not uh, not too distant future, and that's going to cause a partial wipe too. There's been a lot of issues with items when they were spawning in, as part of the new persistent entity streaming that they've implemented. It's, it's caused a lot of issues, and that has forced them to have to go apparently and do a, a wipe of items and ships that you buy in game. Not of credits though. That means that you can go out and you can begin to play. You can begin to earn credits and you begin to earn reputation. And the credits and the reputation should remain over the wipe from 3.18.0 to 3.18.1. So what I recommend you do is, if you want to play, don't go out and buy any big expensive ships with your in-game money now. Go earn them, store them up, 
And when 3.18.1 comes around, then you can go out and buy your big ships um, if you've been saving up enough money for it already. In other Star Citizen news, uh, CIG has, of course, these inside Star Citizen, and um, last week they talked about engineering, which is coming to Star Citizen. But it's going to be in a very different format than what we have in Elite, where engineering is a, a way to upgrade modules, make them better. In Star Citizen, it's going to be a role you can play on board a ship. I'm expecting larger ships, multi-crewed ships, is where you will probably see a dedicated engineer. They say that there's going to be basically three types of damage that can happen to your ship, other than obviously the whole thing exploding, but engineer-related damage. And that's going to be overheating, wear and tear, and malfunctions. Overheating, of course, can happen as your ship overheats. If you push it too much during combat, it can overheat and it's then the engineer's job to go and fix the modules that has overheated. Simple wear and tear is also something you will occur over time. I'm not expecting this to be a huge thing in your day-to-day -day play sessions. I'll explain that more in a second. And malfunctions, they say, is more complicated things where something is just not behaving the way it's supposed to. And it seems that each type of, of damage that's happened to a module requires different types of solutions in order to fix said problem. Um, and this is going to be an engineer's uh, job to go and do that on the ship. And, it, and they explain it as being something you will do in the heat of battle. So while you're being shot at, you're going to be running around just like if you watch Star Trek, you know exactly what I'm on about. Like the middle of battle, you're running around, you're fixing modules, you're trying to keep this ship flying. <laughs> you're trying to make sure that it will keep flying. And you will have the pilot shouting at you saying, I need my guns and get my shields back. And you're desperately trying to prioritize your task to get the whole thing running. I think it could be awesome if implemented correctly. What they have shared with us so far looks, it sounds amazing. But it is going to be a while, I think, before we see it. They did say that it may come sooner than you think. Inside Star Citizen video was also titled as part of the whole Road to 4.0 series. So I'm expecting that engineering is something we're going to see with 4.0. And of course, also with the introduction of the pyro system. Because while overheating and, and malfunctions make sense in terms of like uh, ship fights in the middle of a fight, um, wear and tear don't make a lot of, does not make a lot of sense when you're just looking at the Stanton system. Stanton system is small and takes 10 minutes to get to a station, worst case. So... You don't really have the need for engineering at this point in the game because you don't, you're not at least the wear or tear part of it. You're not going to stay out in space with your ship for that long and you will just dock it. And I assume that when you can do the repair on your ship as you dock, that that's also going to reset the wear and tear on your modules. I don't know. I just assume. But anyway, it's very interesting. I think it's a nice approach. And I've talked about this before. I like CAG's approach going more and more into the... Um, multi-role ships that more and more encourage encourage people to go and, and play together flying one ship rather than it being playing together flying separate ships. I like that approach. I think it's um, I think it's a nice approach and I'm really looking forward to that getting more and more fleshed out. We're seeing it more and more being added into the game and it's being thought of into new gameplay loops. We've seen some new refining ships coming so that multi that is actually multi ships so that doesn't make a lot of sense there but <laughs> for at least for for salvage we've seen the the reclaimer now has a huge demand for multiplayer and as, and again, we see more and more ships in the pipeline that's going to be catered towards that multi crew role um that is actually the rebalance of mining where they're going to try to rebalance it so that multi crew ships make more sense than they do today um, after that uh, rebalance of mining that's going to come here in 319, I believe. So we see the game moving more and more in that direction, where you can even as a new player, if you don't have any big ships, you can probably get a get hired onto a, a bigger ship for some of your friends and go and, and, and work on there and earn some money that way. Let's go and talk about the live stream tomorrow. With 318 out, I am, of course, going to jump into, um, into Star Citizen, and we're going to be playing with the 318 update. I'm likely going to go and do some salvage. This is the main feature that I'm interested in in this patch. I, as For those of you guys who have been following the channel for a while, you know that I'm a mining nerd. I love industrial gameplay where I can go and I can find a process and I can like min-max optimize it to hell. I love that. And that's also why I'm going to be playing around with some uh, with some salvage. Maybe we're going to do some um, some different multi-crew. I'm not sure if we're going to go out on a reclaimer, but maybe we're going to do some multi-ship um, salvage, get a hauling ship out and, and maybe even get some, uh, some fighter support. I don't know. Maybe we're going to hire some people and put them in the cargo hold to go and help us move cargo around. I don't know. We'll see what happens on the day. And as I mentioned, Star Citizen is a bit of a, um, 
a bit of a rough spot right now, at least as I'm recording this in terms of stability. I assume that's going to be improved upon before the live stream. If it has not, if the game is still on super unstable and you can't log in, I'm going to go and do something else. Simply because I don't want to sit and live stream, log in to Star Citizen Simulator for two hours. Um, done that way too many times. And if, while it's fun sitting and chatting to you guys, I don't think it's... it's. I want to do something else that's a little bit more entertaining to watch. So if Star Citizen is still too unstable to be, uh, to be reliable, to be live streamed on Tuesday, I mean tomorrow, um, I'll do something else. I'll figure out what I'm going to do instead. But otherwise, we are going to jump into Star Citizen and play with a new update. Thanks so much for watching and also next time. I'll see you guys in space.